Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, February 18th, and it is a beautiful sunny February day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. It's cold, it's in the 20s right now, but we're going to get up to the high 30s and uh, yeah, not too bad. Snow yesterday, snow Friday night into Saturday, got about two inches, it was pretty heavy slushy stuff, so it was fun getting it off the sidewalks, but uh, yeah, all good. All good. Ah, so today we are going to be enjoying the tobacco of the week chosen by the viewers on the Friday night live stream. And in this case, somewhat coerced by myself. I'll tell you about that. But we've got uh, three nuns and uh, I like three nuns. I've had it quite a bit in the past. I've got a lot of tins in the cellar and I had actually opened this earlier in the month. And last night we had a choice between this and two jars of tobacco and I really shouldn't have put this in the running because I had already opened it, but you know what? <laughs> I wanted three nuts. So that's what we wound up with. It was voted. Uh, we've got two jars left in the big boxo jars. So from this point forward, we are not going to uh, add anything to that until those two jars are gone because I just want to get that box done. And then we're going to go to a lot of tins that I've got, um, occasional jars. We'll, we'll see. Got a lot of stuff to go through on the, for the tobacco of the week. But let's get some Three Nuns loaded up here. If you're not familiar with Three Nuns, it's a very old and uh, storied blend that has gone through various iterations over the years. And I'm not going to get into the whole history of it, but it originally had Perique, and then they took out the Perique, and then they put the Perique back in, and then they took it out again. <laughs> This is the dark fired Kentucky version of Three Nun. So there's no Perique in this blend. It is a uh, coin, you know, cut rope coin type tobacco. It's, it's actually very difficult to separate out the coins without breaking them up, but there you get some idea of what we're dealing with. And this is uh, Virginia, uh, some Brazilian, and uh, dark fired Kentucky. This tin is actually from 2014, so uh, August of 2014, so almost 10 years old. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful stuff. So let me get it loaded up. I'm going to be smoking this in the uh, Cane Rod Pipes Demi Lovat. Uh, Cane Rod Pipes number one, actually. Uh, keeping in mind that there is a number zero, which I call the pipe like object. Uh, and this stuff is nice. It, it really rubs out very easily. You just have to pinch it between your fingers and it goes right in. It's uh, That's why it's so hard to separate the coins. It is a very loose, uh, almost curly cut, I would say. And it, you know, I'm not a big fan of Dark Fired in blends like Old Dark Fired. I, I think it's just overdone and kind of, I can't say bland, but just very monotone in its flavor profile. But this blend kind of gets it right. Um, it, it, when Dark Fire Kentucky is used properly, I think it's a really great condimental tobacco. And th Three Nuns is an example of that. Now this is blended by McBaron. Uh, they purchased the rights uh, to at least the Dark Fired version. And there's some controversy over that as well. And I found out on Friday night that uh, there's some thought that the reason why the Dark Fired is used is because the Virginia leaf is not of the same quality that it used to be, and it just doesn't make a very good vapor. Uh, so the dark fire it helps smooth that out. I don't know. I like it. I've never had the original. I would love to have tried it, but I have had Cabby's Mixture, which a few people, including my buddy Doug Owen, say is very similar to the original Three Nuns. And Cabby's Mixture is a fantastic blend, which is also no longer available. But uh, this is worth checking out. It's it's definitely a blend that I think, if you like Virginia Old Dark Fired, Virginia Periques, those kind of things, if you like a Scudo or a Luxury Bullseye Flake. Uh, another one that was mentioned was uh, the Bologna de Or from Savinelli. That's got some real similarities to this. It's a good solid blend, and while it is a McBaron product, it doesn't have any of that McBaron bitiness to it.
This does have a a rum-based topping, at least it's claimed to have. Uh, fresh tins, I've never really noticed it to have much of a topping. Uh, one thing I will say that has changed is a fresh tin of this does seem to be more uh, Virginia prominent in terms of the more like a grassy, somewhat tartar Virginias, whereas Now, after the, the 10 years of age, this is much more mellow. It doesn't have those sharp edges to it. A lot of deep, rich sweetness. And the dark fire, it actually adds a spiciness to it that uh, is freak like in a sense. But you're not getting that overdone, smoky, barbecue-y type thing. It's a very, very nice blend. Um, I don't know if I could do it as like an all-day smoke. This is one that I like to pay attention to. Um, but no reason other than that. I mean, it's not overbearing for me. It doesn't, uh, doesn't like swamp out my palate or anything. It's just, I, I like to pay attention to this blend. It's not something I would enjoy smoking while I was doing some work down here or driving or something like that, because I don't think it gets the attention it deserves then. It's interesting, there are some blends like, uh, like the Low Country Virginia Burley, which is a fantastic blend. Uh, I don't really think I need to pay attention to that one. I don't really get much out of it if I really concentrate on it, but it's good. And then there's blends like Haunted Bookshop where you can go either way with it. It can be just a stuff and puff, enjoy a smoke while you're doing something, or you can sit back and contemplate it and get more out of it. It has those layers of complexity if you want to go down to them. And then there's blends like this where you just you you get the most out of it when you when you spend time. Sorry, Isabel's barking up there. Uh, hopefully she'll stop. She's been out in the yard about five times this morning. <laughs> She loves the snow. She loves to just lay in the snow. And uh, I don't know, I'd, I'd get cold, but she apparently doesn't. Um, and she waits for her friend down the street to come out so they can bark together. Uh, not a great thing at six o'clock in the morning, but <laughs> what are you gonna do? I may have to yell at her to get her to stop barking. We'll see. Still using my Sherlock Tamper, one of my favorites. In terms of uh, ease of smoking and, you know, preparation and all that, it's, I mean, this is 10 years old, so it may be different for a fresh tin and I just don't remember. I don't remember it being particularly difficult to light or anything, but this rubs out really easy. It's dry enough that, you know, with that little bit of rubbing, you get enough uh, to light on the surface with no problem and it's, it's not a big issue with relays. So, yeah, good stuff. Get yourself some three nuns. Very enjoyable. I don't think you can get these tins anymore. They probably now have a big sticker on it. go. So, we got a holiday tomorrow. Here in the States, uh, tomorrow is Washington's birthday, which uh, is now popularly called President's Day, although it is Washington's birthday. Uh, 
we used to, back in the good old days, <laughs> when I was when I was a young lad, we used to have Washington's birthday and we used to have Lincoln's birthday. Um, these were two distinct holidays in February. I believe they were in February. I think that's right. Um, actually, hey Google, when was Lincoln's birthday? Monday, February 12th, 2024. There we go. February 12th. So yeah, they were, they were separate, separate days and, and, you know, I believe we got the day off from school for both of them. I can remember making little construction paper cutouts of the profiles of Abraham Lincoln and, and uh, George Washington to, to hang on the windows in school and stuff like that. And these were identified as two presidents that were worth celebrating. Uh, now with the changes over the recent years, and I, I don't know if it was if it's been five years or 10 years or 20 years, because I just don't keep track, but uh, the institution of Martin Luther King Day as a federal holiday uh, has made it kind of onerous to have multiple Mondays off in February, because February is a short month anyway. So they decided to nix Lincoln's birthday, keep Washington's birthday, and start to call it President's Day, although it officially is Washington's birthday. The President's Day thing is more of a cultural uh, reference. Maybe some states have changed it, but at the federal level, this is Washington's birthday. And I think that's important because when you say President's Day, people, people, well, nobody pays attention to history anymore. And people start to think that it's like, oh, it's for all the presidents, you know, or it's for the current president or whatever. And that is most definitely not the case. This is to celebrate the legacy of George Washington. And Washington has always been one of my personal heroes. Uh, I grew up in, in Philadelphia, very close to the historic uh, uh, area where, you know, there was the... The, the Continental Congress was held and the, and the original residence of the president was there while they were building the, uh, the White House. Uh, the, the Independence Hall, the Liberty Bell, you know, all that stuff, that revolutionary period was, was a very prominent part of my, my life when I was growing up. And uh, Washington and Benjamin Franklin, because I always had an interest in science and the Franklin Institute is in Philadelphia, I used to go there a lot. Uh, was very important in my development. So yeah, these these two men have been a part of my life since I was a little kid. And Washington was always sort of the hero that I looked to in terms of, you know, what, how how should one be brave? How should one conduct themselves? How should one um, be honest? There there was the the story of Washington cutting down the cherry tree, which is definitely not true, but. You know, I cannot tell a lie, I cut it down, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, these these things kind of get into you as a kid and uh, wind up meaning a lot to you even when you're an old man like me. So, But Washington was an incredibly important man in the development of our country. And a lot of what we take for granted today in terms of our form of government is directly traceable to him, not just that he was the first president, but he was very influential. So after the war, the Revolutionary War, after the U.S. won, or, yeah, the states won their independence from Britain, uh, there was a form of governance that was referred to as the Articles of Confederation. And this was really just a loose confederation of the states. It was um, helpful, but it wasn't really, it, it, was, it was prone to being broken very easily. And Washington actually referred to it as a rope made of sand, which I think is a great, uh, great analogy. So he saw problems with it. He was vocal about this, but he tried to be reserved. I mean, he was a very important figure in the Revolutionary War. 
uh, general of the, 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 the Continental Army, and uh, you know he was he was known. He was he was a nationally recognized hero, and he felt that he had a responsibility to not meddle. So he was he was reserved, but nevertheless, when he saw a problem like he thought he saw with the Articles of Confederation, he he would write a letter about it or something, and you know state his case. So it was decided to hold a. Continental Congress, uh, Constitutional Congress, and Washington didn't want to go. He he didn't think it was right for him to be involved in this. He he also questioned whether or not it was even legal to do this. You know, under the the Articles of Confederation, were they actually being treasonous to to hold this uh, Constitutional Congress? And uh, of course, he wound up presiding over it and being an incredibly important part of it and when the office of presidency was established it was just assumed that he would take it uh there was a an election uh he won the election unanimously uh, unanimously in terms of the electoral college uh and he 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 served two terms the second term he also won unanimously now there's a lot of things that he did that <laughs> we now take for granted that sort of shaped the office of the presidency. And I just want to point out two of them that are, are really surprising to me. The first is how we address the president of the United States. What is the proper form of address? If you were to meet the president tomorrow, how, what should you call him? And the answer is Mr. President. That's the formal uh, address. Uh, just like in England, when you meet the king now, you would say, Your Majesty. Here in the U.S., when you meet the president, you say, Mr. President. That wasn't what was initially suggested. There were terms like uh, His Excellency or His Excellency the President, uh, His Majesty the President, things like that. And Washington said, no, you know, that's not what we're, that's not why we fought this war. <laughs> you know, we fought this war to have a people's government. Um, and he said, you know, I should not be exalted above others. Uh, I have a title, which is president, so you can call me Mr. President. So I, th I thought that really says a lot about the man and shaped how that office is now uh, observed. He did a lot of other things, like he, he established the idea of having a cabinet. Uh, he was very against parties, political parties. He, he was a strong component of republicanism, meaning the form of government, not the Republican Party. But he, did, he thought parties were dangerous. He thought that that was going to lead to a lot of uh, problems. And boy, was he right. Uh, the other thing that he did that is just shocking when you think about it today is he decided not to run for a third term. There was nothing in the Constitution that prevented him to run for a third term and a fourth term. And, you know, honestly, Washington could have been president until the day he died because of his popularity. But he, he said, no, you know, two terms is enough. Uh, he wanted to get back to his farm. He wanted to get back to, uh, to his life. He didn't believe that politics should be a career. He believed it was a form of service, just like military service. Um, not a lot of folks believe that anymore, which is unfortunate. So yeah, um, he was a great man, and he did a lot of incredibly insightful things in his in his time that have sort of become institutionalized in our form of government, which uh, I just find that fascinating, the, the influence of one person. Now, the truth is, somebody else, you know, John Adams was the person that ran against him in, in the the first, well, actually, I don't think there was a, I, he did run against him the first term. Uh, you know, if Adams had won, maybe he would have done the same thing. I don't know. But we owe a lot to George Washington. So, happy birthday, Mr. President. <laughs> to quote Marilyn Monroe, which I don't think I ever would have done. Ah. Uh, so, I, I'm sorry, I'm struggling a bit here because I'm talking too much and not puffing enough.
this this is a nice blend because it does stay fairly consistent through the bowl as well but never gets boring there's always the the virginias or and and there is a difference between that brazilian uh leaf and and the virginia it's it's subtle but the brazilian's a little bit brighter and the virginia's a bit darker and they sort of play back and forth with one another and the dark fired is is there is it's it's forming a nice base and it's also adding some it's complementing the sweetness of the virginia's and giving a little a little spiciness to it it's funny i i find that in some blends i have trouble distinguishing between dark fired kentucky and perique even though they're very distinctive if, if you were to smoke them individually which i have done um you can tell the difference between them with no problem Yep, tobacco blending is a is a dark art for sure. Speaking of that, I made another batch of my homemade bookshop, which I keep in a Fuselier's ration tin. Played a little bit with the ratio of the long cut Virginia to the red Virginia and dropped the burly a bit. And I'm not happy with it. I will smoke it. Uh, it's good. But it, it didn't turn out the way I had hoped it would. And that's what's kind of really interesting to me about playing with this. You know, you, you think you understand it. You say, okay, I, I can pull out all the different components. I want a little bit less of that and a little bit more of that. Mm -mm. <laughs> there, there's an interplay between those things that you cannot empirically define. You have to play with it. You have, you, you have to, uh, well, you do have to empirically define it. You cannot rationally define it. Uh, you have to experiment. It's fun. It's fun. Get yourself some blending tobaccos and have some fun. Right after you get yourself some three nuns. I'm, I'm giving a lot of, uh, I'm providing a shopping list. And why not? International Pipe Smoking Day is this week, so you got all the sales going on. Ah. So today, my wife's in Pittsburgh. So I don't have anything to do other than my usual uh, Sunday routine. I might just take it easy, but I got the wall. The wall painting is done, and I got to get shelves up. So maybe I'll spend a little bit of time with that. We'll see. We shall see. Next week, um, my wife and I are going to be going away for the weekend, so there will not be a Friday night live stream next week. And there's a very good chance there will not be a Sunday video next week. In fact, I'm almost certain there will not be, because uh, I don't think we're coming back until Sunday. We're going to Bethlehem, PA for an event that my wife wanted to attend. And uh, yeah, she's good to me. She lets me do all sorts of stuff. So when she wants something like that, I give it. I give in. I do it. So hopefully we'll have some fun, and uh, I'll be back March 1st will be the Friday night live stream. And then I guess March 3rd will be my next Sunday video. So you get a break from me. You probably need that, whether you know it or not. Most people that know me for any length of time appreciate a break from me. All right, folks, with that, I'm going to draw this to a close. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday and you're looking forward to a great week ahead. If you have uh, the day off tomorrow for Washington's birthday, enjoy that. Uh, get a chance, look up General Washington online and do a little bit of reading and learn about some of the amazing things he did. So enjoy yourself. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.